Welcome to eTrailer.com. Today, we're taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver here on the 2021 Nissan Rogue Sport. A trailer hitch receiver is going to allow you to really expand what your vehicle is capable of and what you can do with it. The Nissan Rogue Sport is a little more compact for a crossover, but you can fold the second row seats down and you got a nice deep well for a cargo area. But if you have the vehicle full of you, your family, or your friends, and you want to take more stuff with you, you either have to go with a roof rack or you can get a trailer hitch and that'll open up a big possibility for all the stuff you can have back here. We're gonna have a 3,500 pound gross trailer weight rating, which is the force point outward on the receiver hitch tube. And for our tongue weight, which is gonna be most of our bike racks or cargo carrying accessories, that's gonna be a 525 pound weight rating. A nice thing about this hitch receiver on the back of the Nissan Rogue Sport is that the cross tube's completely hidden up underneath the vehicle. So the only exposed section is going to be your two inch by two inch receiver tube and the rolled steel uh, safety chain loops. Here on the side, you can see the 5 8 inch hitch pin hole. That'll accept your industry standard hitch pin. Now the hitch will not come with one. We have a lot of options here at eTrailer.com though, and I highly suggest looking at a locking one if you wanna make sure that whatever accessories you mount in here, stay in here. The rolled style safety chain loops are wide enough to accept your normal S-type hooks and your larger clevis style hooks. So no matter what your safety chains have on there, you'll be able to hook up just fine. Some measurements to keep in mind when choosing a trailer hitch for your vehicle are going to be from the center of the hitch pin to the outside of the bumper. And that's going to be for your folding accessories, like some cargo carriers and bike racks. And from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside, we're looking at four and a quarter inches. Your second measurement is going to be your ground clearance, and we'll measure that from the ground to the bottom of the top inside edge of the hitch receiver tube, which is going to be 12 and a quarter inches. That's going to help you select a ball mount for the correct rise and drop to adapt from your hitch receiver to the coupler on your trailer. As far as installations go, this one's not too super overwhelming. On the passenger side, we're going to be reusing three of the factory bolts that hold in our tow hook. And then on the driver's side, you do have to enlarge an access hole to slip carriage bolts through. But using a step bit or a burr bit, that's going to be pretty simple to knock out. But we do need a torque wrench to get everything tightened down to specs and ensure it's all safely installed. With that being said, we'll pull it in the shop and show you step by step how to get this installed yourself at home. To begin our installation, we're going to be underneath of the vehicle on the back here. We're going to be using lifts to give you guys a better idea and visual of what's going on under here as we guide you along. This can easily be done at home in the driveway with jack stands or in the garage. The first step of the installation is going to be removing the exhaust canister, which is going to be this little plastic housing right up here on the passenger side of the vehicle, just to the left of this rubber isolator. There's gonna be two nuts to remove. They're both gonna be 10 millimeter in size. One, you have to bend the heat shield down a little bit and see right there. We're gonna be using a box end wrench to get at that one. Then we'll be using a 10 millimeter socket with an extension to access the other one. If you can see the sidewalls on the mounting bracket there, they did block off our box end wrench just a little bit, but I was able to bust it loose and now I'm able to unthread it with my hand. Now straight above where we were just working, that's where we're going to use our 10 millimeter socket and extension to access this one. Again, depending upon the length of the extension, it might be a little rowdy getting up in here with the tool and your hands. With the both nuts removed, we can now remove this bracket. With the emissions canister bracket loosened up and out of our way, we can now remove this tow hook from this side of the vehicle. There's gonna be six bolts up under here. There's gonna be three on the inside of the frame rail. Then there's gonna be three along the bottom. We'll remove those with an 18 millimeter socket. It can be a little tight up in here, like I said before. Be mindful of the heat shield. Use your other hand to kind of pry it out of the way so that way it's not cutting or scraping on your wrist. All right. And with the six bolts removed, we can remove the tow hook, but we won't be installing this again. We can put our emissions canister back up in place before we start prepping the hardware to get our hitch up in here. Now that our exhaust canister is back up in place, you can bend the heat shield back up into its original form. The hardware for your hitch is going to come with three bolts in the bag. We'll be reusing three of the six bolts we removed from the passenger side. But here on the driver's side, two of the bolts in our kit are going to be carriage bolts that we're going to fish wire up into the frame with spacer blocks. 
If you take a closer look at our access hole on this side of the frame, however, it's not big enough for our hardware to fit. So we're gonna be using a step bit to make it big enough until we can fit the head of our carriage bolts in there, and then we'll fish wire it all in place. Now that our access hole is big enough for our hardware to fit through, we're gonna come back and cover the bare metal with a coat of paint to prevent any rust or corrosion from developing once we install our hitch. And then we'll set up our fish wires. To set up our carriage bolts for installation, we're gonna take our fish wire, feed it through the spacer block, then we'll thread on the carriage bolts. Feeding through our access hole, we're gonna be dropping carriage bolts through this hole right here and this one. One thing that helps is to put a bend, like a little hook on the end of the fish wire, so that way if it does fall out while you're feeding it through, it can snag itself and prevent it so being a headache. But then also holding it up and roughly in line with where your hole's gonna be and putting a secondary bend just slightly to help guide it down. There we go. Spacer block first, followed by our carriage bolt, then wiggle them down and out. With our two carriage bolts dropped through the frame, our third bolt is going to be this hex head bolt with a conical tooth washer that's going to be secured into a factory weld nut behind the access hole teeth facing up into the hitch to secure it in place. And here on the passenger side where we removed the tow hook, those three weld nuts on the bottom of the frame, we're gonna be reusing those three bolts to secure our hitch in place. With all the hardware prep, it's time to lift the hitch up into place. It's helpful to have an extra set of hands for the other side, but over here on the driver's side, we can feed our fish wires through the two front holes and start working ourselves up and around the exhaust. If your carriage bolts pop back up into the frame, having the fish wire lead still on is helpful to jostle them down and through. You can just rip the fish wire off, but if you take the time to unthread it, it can be helpful to have later just in case. You can get it threaded on hand tight. Last thing for the installation is gonna to be torquing down all the hardware to the manufacturer's specifications, which can be found in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, they can be rented from most local auto parts stores, or we have them available here at eTrailer.com if you think it might be something handy to have around for the future. And that'll do it for our look at and installation of the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver here for the 2021 Nissan Rogue Sport.